Hi, I'm Femi OK. Today on the stream, what's next for Iraq after its recent elections? You may remember that youth led anti government protests led to these elections being called early. More than 3,000 candidates ran, so we have plenty to talk about. Dava, Rain, and Carwin voted. Let's see what they had to say just a few hours ago. I voted for a Kurdish political party in Iraq's 2021 parliamentary elections because I believe the constitutional rights of the Kurdish people in Iraq have not yet been realized. The preliminary results of the election show that Iraq can hold an election with a minimum amount of fraud and irregularities. While the focus is understandably on the elections right now, it must be understood that this outcome is expressly linked to the various factors that are destroying Assyrians in Iraq, including a denial of real security, economic marginalization, and social exclusion. Electoral reform is needed to ensure that minority representatives are actually representative of minority populations. I think it is time now to the Iraqi different parties to put the differences aside and sit together to form a new government, a government that respects federalism to the Iraq, human rights and the minorities, and also provides a better services, security, stability to the Iraqi people. So let's meet your panel in the studio. Hello, Rasha. Hello to you, Dashni, and hello, Lue. Good to have you here on the stream. I want you to greet our international audience. Rasha, tell everybody who you are and what you do. I am Rasha Al-Qaidi. I am a senior analyst at New Lines Institute for Strategy and Policy here in Washington, DC. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Thank Dashni. You. Introduce yourself to our international audience. My name is Dashni Murat. I am an artist and activist, and I work on advancing gender equality. Good to have you. No stranger to the international stage. Lue, good to have you. Please remind people who you are and what you do. Hello, I'm Lue Al Khatib. I'm a former energy minister of the Iraqi government and, um, and uh, currently fellow at the uh, Columbia University. Let's start with the voting experience. Dashni, you were telling everybody about how exciting it was to get out and vote. How exciting was it? to get out and vote? Well, I think um, if you compare the election with the previous ones, it was no bomb attacks, there was no curfew, and it was clear that there was some sense of security, and it was very clean. Yes, the turnout was very low, but um, at the same time, uh, we have to know that the election was uh, a result of the protest happening in Baghdad in 2019. So pushing for elections on time already is a win for the people and to go out there and to use your right. Louie. And I think to me that is very special. Yeah. Louie, pick up, please. Well, uh, the, this election um, came after... Uh, but to start with, it's the first uh, early elections that are taking place in Iraq, um, post uh, major protest. A protest uh, that um, uh, came very much like as a result of like 10, 11 years of um, public resentment, uh, calling for reform and um, uh, better uh, um, future for Iraq. And it's uh, about time that Iraq uh, to uh, make a, a better start and. Uh, I'm glad to see that uh, many of the youth uh, made it to parliament uh, on the basis of the early results uh, that have been published. And let's hope uh, the future holds a, a better prospect for us. I'm pulling up a tweet here from Rasha. Rasha, I love your honesty on Twitter. <laughs> Me, October the 9th, least interesting elections in Iraq ever. <laughs> Me, October the 11th. Move over Squid Games. <laughs> What happened? Well, I think, first of all, for all the, the talk about all the boycott, 41% uh, is, of course, the lowest turnout. But given how much we were hearing about boycott, 41 is not so bad. The last election, it was 45. So it was not as low as anticipated. I was yeah. 
predicting perhaps 35. So 41 was better than what I had anticipated. Also the results themselves, some of them were not so, the election results, some of them were not too surprising, but others definitely were. Um, mm -hmm. What was very exciting was, as uh, the guest had mentioned previously, uh, the newcomers into the parliament, yeah. the protesters that, because the protest movement itself had been dismissed for a long time by many observers as not having political influence, it actually did. And in where? In two of the most influential, important provinces in Iraq, in Najaf and Karbala. The fact that these independent grassroots movements actually established themselves and, and, and achieved the highest votes, defying the status quo and the establishment, that's very, very huge. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you can talk to our panel. They know a lot about Iraq and a lot about these recent elections. The comment section is live right now. Jump into the comment section, ask your questions and be part of today's show. Let's look at the turnout in comparison to previous elections because people were beginning to read something into the turnout, Lue. Let's, let's put up that turnout right now um, and then we can look through and just see the difference between 2005, 79%. That is enthusiasm. And then 2021, what am I seeing there, Lue? Well, uh, let's uh, be realistic. Democracy is something completely new to Iraqis post uh, at least half a century of military rule and dictatorship. So uh, this kind of like uh, instrument of kind of like uh, living, let it be like in governance or social uh, uh, um, standard and so on. It, it's yet to be kind of like understood and, and implemented rightly. In terms of like the turnout, uh, I don't see any problem with the 41 uh, percent, even if it's or, or even if it's lower. Uh, if I would compare it to, to the last election in the UK, that was 37 percent. And I'm talking about a mature democracy. So, uh, realistically speaking, one needs to be uh, um, uh, much more uh, re realis realistic about uh, what's happening in Iraq. We're talking about a, pol a, a political process uh, that's completely new to the Iraqis, and it's only 18 years old. And uh, it's uh, yet to witness uh, further reform um, um, as, we, as we progress. Uh, democracy is not something that you can implement over a few years. Certainly, it doesn't uh, mature or develop over, over a, a generation. It needs a good two generations, to say the least. Mm. And uh, looking into like developed democracies across the world, we're talking about hundreds of years. So uh, uh, we really need to take this into consideration when we think of like the, the progress. Yes, Iraq uh, lost lots of opportunities when it comes to uh, economic reform, political reform, and social reforms, especially during the uh, good days of uh, high oil prices. Uh, and and uh, but again, uh, it's, um, it's it's a learning curve, and uh, the, the political class that uh, running Iraq uh, since 2003 until now, um, they've never been into um, the role of governing Iraq. Uh, they lived all their life as opposition. Okay. I'm, I'm afraid they, 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 are, they are acting like opposition within governments. Yeah, yeah. And they, they are yet to learn uh, how to rule a country and, and build a, a proper state. Dashni, I've been looking at your Instagram account and you have spent the last few weeks encouraging people. And I'm going to su suggest that they're young people to get out and vote. Um, you've been very persuasive, very enticing. Let me give our audience a little sense of how you're saying to your audience, to young people, this is important. Let's take a look. Oh, baby, when you talk like that, you make a woman go mad. So be wise and keep on. See, Dashni, I have a feeling that the politicians were not campaigning in the same way that you were trying to get people to go no. out and vote, right? <laughs> I don't think they were doing that. Hence, maybe the 41%. But it was working. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I think... Well, I think a lot of people I spoke to, they said that we don't know much about the candidates because all we see is the posters hanging uh, in, in the streets. And um, I learned a lot from, from the young people and speaking to even the taxi drivers I was taking that um, people uh, have lost trust and it's, it's a lack of trust in the system uh, in, because of the corruption and the presence of militia. And there were so many reasons of low participation um, and people were just, um, 
you know, being a direct victim of the conflict after conflict. And I recently came back from Sinjar and the returnees uh, are back to nothing, uh, to ruins. And then you see uh, that people miss so many uh, basic needs like water and electricity. Uh, so I stand by the people for uh, boycotting the, the uh, election. But at the same time, we are giving away our power. And I uh, just wanted to make sure that there is hope. It is because of um, the protest that had political aspirations, that is the reflection of the election. And it led to, I think right now it's 35 seats that has shaped 11% of the next parliament. So I think we can have uh, trust for the future because it's more of a cleaner uh, turnout. Uh, there was less fraud reported. And I hope that people can use this as a hope because the young people that protested in Baghdad, they brought mm -hmm. change and okay. they forced okay. for the elections to be on time. Russia, winners and losers in this election. We've only got preliminary results so far. Yes. But what can you deduce? So we do have um, a decline in the popularity of the armed groups of militias, their political wing in parliament. Um, their votes have dropped enormously. And there have been signs on the streets that this has been happening for several years. We don't really hear about it in the media nor in the analysis, but it was there that people were fed up with the assassinations, with the kidnaps, with the kidnappings, with the extortion, that they wanted a sense of peace, that yes, ISIS is gone, and these groups perhaps played a role in defeating ISIS, even if it was marginal or not, but now they are, they have become the terror and the people were fed up with them. And at the same time, protests did not help or did not solve, um, could not change that system, could not even um, sort of contain their activities. So the only way was to vote was to vote against them or not vote for them. Um, that was a massive change. And yes, the new, the grassroots movements that had, um, that have established themselves now, they were not financially supported. This is key. This is very, very important. They were not backed by any of the mainstream or established um, parties. And many of the mainstream established parties also failed. We see also a, a, a new trend in, poli in, poli in regional uh, politics. So you have, for example, the Islamic Party of Iraq, uh, which represented the Sunni uh, political wings for, for several years, is no longer influential. It's been replaced by Mohammed al-Halbusi for international audience. This is a, a Sunni politician that came from, uh, came from Anbar, from the Western province, and has now um, expanded his influence. However, he does not play on any sectarian identity, really. The only thing that we should be monitoring and observing well is that we will not probably see immediate change within this elector electoral term. We might see it within the next 10 to 20 years as more Ooh. grassroots people end see, up... See, Rasha, if you say that to a young person yes. who was in the streets last year, yeah. 10 to 20 years, what do you think they're going to say? Iraqis are patient. <laughs> We've been in conflict for 40 years. So saying that in 10 years, yeah. you will see absolutely a change, that we will have a more mature democracy is, is something that they would, would be worth investing in and something that they would find very convincing. Uh, if I may say something here, um, Femi, I mean, I couldn't agree more with what uh, Russia and Dashni mentioned in terms of like the positive uh, addition to the new um, election uh, that uh, took place. I think 11% uh, is, is uh, significant, significant added value. I, was, uh, I said in previous interviews that if this election produces 5%, it, it, it's great news. So uh, looking into uh, the re initial results to produce around 11% or more, this is a significant uh, um, um, progress. And if, we, if this pace of uh, development uh, continues over the next uh, two to three terms, uh, electoral terms, uh, um, we could see a complete uh, uh, change uh, across the, 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 the uh, na national scene in Iraq. The, as, as I mentioned earlier, democracy, it's a, it's a journey and it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, yes, uh, Ira the Iraqis went through sanctions, uh, uh, wars and, uh, and different type of regimes from monarchy to republic, to, from centralism to federalism. Uh, to totalitarian 
rule and so on. I think um, um, 15 to 20 years, it's, uh, it's um, uh, not much in that uh, timeline. And time matters. And, I th and I'm quite hopeful that uh, the, um, the youth uh, will make uh, the change. In fact, uh, even um, individuals that's running on uh, uh, the tradition, on uh, electoral tickets so within the uh, traditional parties, the Islamic parties of like ethno sectarian parties, they tend to um, uh, talk uh, as like a secular and, and uh, part of like a civil society. So the reform is happening from within. Uh, let it be within the traditional parties uh, or the new parties that been formed as a result of the of the of the protests. Uh, these okay. protests, I'm, uh, I'm afraid, will continue uh, for uh, over the next few years uh, until uh, demands are met by the people. Um, uh, I cannot see these protests will stop any soon. Uh, it may vary in terms of like the, the intensity of them, but uh, uh, until Iraq witnesses a significant change uh, in the landscape and uh, uh, basically um, uh, uh, put an end to corruption, uh, it's going to be quite um, impossible to uh, to stop them. Okay. Let's let's not let's not dismiss hope. Well, can I just? I think that the people really had enough. If you look at the young people, uh, they are so insanely talented and they are so skilled. I mean, I'm not just talking about uh, uh, the Kurdistan region where I come from. I'm talking about people I met through a project. I, I traveled all around Iraq from Baghdad to Mosul to Sinjar. I've met with women. I've met with young people. And um, they are so done right now. And uh, because they are neglected, because... Um, they th they are not contributing to the economy of the country. And I think that's one of the reasons they didn't trust the elections, because they think it, it's not for them. I, I, I am very hopeful with what the election turned out to be. And it also showed to have independent candidate is so important. Yeah. But right now, yeah. there's a stronger message for people that boycotted the election, really sends out a strong message of, we can no longer be fooled. We can no longer be deceived. We know what we want. And the people don't care of who is out there. They're just tired of a century of conflict after conflict. They right now want basic needs, water, electricity, health care, uh, women's rights. It's just it has gone all the way down. And right now we're dealing with a climate crisis. And we don't want to be another next charity of the international community to be another charity of the world. Um, the climate crisis mm -hmm. has already mm -hmm. hit Iraq, and we need our new government to get their act together. There is hope, and this new election has shown significant change, and the democracy is slow indeed, but um, they need to act very quickly so that the um, international or, or, or uh, regional influence right. is less. So, if I, can, if, so I can just, if I can just comment, this is where we kind of need to slow down because uh, there, the parliament system in Iraq has been over the past, the past 15 years a web of intervene, intertwined interests. Um, what's different in this election, however, is there, there is perhaps for the first time an opposition. For the past 15 years, it's been basically just distributing the gains among different parties um, according to the ministries that they end up ruling, who gets what, and it doesn't affect, it doesn't reflect on the people. Lives do not approve. Everything that Dashni had mentioned, none of that has happened, none of that has changed, and it could be getting worse. This is the first time there's an actual opposition. This was the group of people that protested for, to change the system. They are now part of parliament. So it's kind of like a checks yeah. and balances. Yeah, it's a kind of amazing bit. when you put it that way. Just like, just listen to that sentence. They protested. And they're now part of parliament. They're now, and yes, 11%. Yeah. That's, that's 11 seats, sorry. Yeah. That's, that's significant, yeah. as Loe was saying. Uh, so now they have, they have perhaps enough influence to maybe uh, modify some of the bills, maybe affect some of the changes that Dashni has been mentioning. That has not happened. This is the significant part. However, it's not going to be easy. We're still on, it's still going to be a battle. All right, so, so Rasha, I, I want to play two video comments mm -hmm. to you. The first one is from Marcin. Yeah. He's a research fellow at Harvard Kennedy School, in Baghdad, Iraq. Yes. And I can't decide with these two side-by-side -side comments. Is the glass half full mm -hmm. or half empty? Okay. Let's start with Marcin.
One of the surprisingly positive outcomes of this election is that despite very low voter turnout, we did see that some of the protest parties that participated in the elections, namely Empty Dad and Independents as well, who had participated in the protest movement and, and run in the elections, they achieved a larger number of seats than we had anticipated. And in this way, it seems that the protest movement may be able to make gains in the next four years. All right, so I see Rasha, she's nodding, right? She yeah. agrees with that. But first, not so fast, let us bring in Lahib, because Lahib has a completely different take. Okay. Here she is. The Iraqi political system suffered a legitimacy crisis already before this election. So this election has been a test for the population's trust in the system, and they've showed to a great degree that this is lacking. The Sudrist made the biggest win in the election, an established political party, uh, which is not likely to make any significant changes in the way that uh, governance is conducted. And even though there were some new parties that made inroads to parliament, their influence is likely to be very low. So both of these fabulous women, whom I both know personally, um, are correct. They're both correct. Okay. Um, I do tend to agree with Lahib on the term that it will be definitely slower. I agree with Marcin that they can perhaps affect change, but it will be slow. So we're not, we're not talking about Muqtada Sadr and his block, or even Dawrat al-Qanun, Nuri Maliki's state of law block, uh, conceding anything to the newcomers in parliament. That's not going to happen. So it's going to be conflict. Um, I think my only worry is that this will perhaps derail the um, voting process on bills and resolutions. That happened in 2011. I believe uh, Lu'ay can comment on this even more. And that, that stopped many projects. It stopped the progress of many things. Um, my worst fear is that happening. Um, but both of them are correct, and it could mm -hmm. go either way. Okay. You're a yeah. good friend to your friends. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to ask you this very briefly because we're right at the end of the show, and I promise our YouTube audience they could also talk to you. Louie, will you take this very briefly? Are the Iraqi people satisfied the election was free and fair? To your best of your knowledge, Louie, go ahead. Well, uh, this is the best that uh, the Iraqis uh, can expect at this moment in time. There is no uh, p perfect uh, scenario, uh, but I would like to uh, build up on a point that Dashni mentioned about uh, the challenge of the climate change and also what Russia mentioned on, on, on the economy side. I think uh, uh, the biggest challenge that the Iraqis will, will face is uh, the, uh, the the economic reform and the economic reform? I'm afraid uh, it does is not going to come uh, pain free. And uh, for this, uh, any government that sh uh, should come in place uh, must act uh, smart and fast uh, to manage uh, people's expectation and to run some sort of like a media campaign to educate the people uh, to, to to basically uh, to bring them from from the past of like. Uh, the reliance and uh, of, on uh, rentierism and so on okay. uh, through the the, the the era of energy transition and accepting uh, market economy. Uh, the, a lot of change need to be uh, considered, but there is no pain-free reform. It's going to mm -hmm. take some time. I would say a minimum of 10 years of a stable governance, uh, 10 years with zero interferences from the political parties, especially of their economic uh, agencies and so on. Yes, we are in the final two minutes of our discussion. I want to draw your attention to this on my laptop. We asked at the beginning of this show, what is next for Iraq? What's next for Iraq after the first election since mass protest? In a sentence, Dashni, what would you say? What would you hope for? The issues are still there, and the next government face a lot of challenges. There is high rate of poverty. There are a lot of school dropouts. COVID-19 was dealt with very weak because our health structure is very weak. Um, people need tangible change in their lives, and I am hopeful because of having 97 females uh, elected, and I hope they'll be the voice, especially of women, to okay. make sure that Thank you, women's position goes forward. Russia, 
What is next for Iraq in a sentence? I guess this would rely on the blocks and the alliances that are going to be performed within the, over the next weeks. Um, that will give us a clear picture on whether the country is going to continue in its sort of political stagnation or, or whether there will be progress. What I can hope for is that this parliament realizes that change is possible and that protests can bring change. And maybe now that there is an opposition within parliament, they might have to change their act. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you guests. Thank you for watching on YouTube and, of course, on TV as well. Have a look here on my laptop. These are three guests you will want to follow on Twitter. We have Rasha, Dashni. Check out her Instagram. It's fantastic. And Lue as well. Thank you so much, Lue, for being part of this show. Appreciate all of you. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.